What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins. Thank you for joining me. As always, if you're finding this content useful, please go ahead, do me a favor, and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. Okay, so moving right along, we're working in Studio One version 4 today, and I wanted to take a moment to have a look at some of the new macros in terms of some of the note selection tools that we have in Studio One version 4. Now, first off, I'm going to be the first to admit that I use macros all the time, but I don't necessarily pay that much attention to the ones that are included. Mostly what I end up doing is finding something that I'd like to do, designing a macro, mapping that out to a key command, and just moving on with my work. Having said that, I was speaking to a friend of mine, Gregor, a little while back, maybe a month or so ago, and he was asking me if I've really taken a moment to dive in and have a look at some of the new note selection options that we have. So I don't have any MIDI information here, but these options over here, select notes, we've got quite a few new options if we have MIDI or note data. Now, in addition to that, we also have these different pages of macros. So we've got these different page one page two and page three. And if you're not seeing these, those are made visible by clicking this icon over here, this little robot looking icon, we can see these macros. So the one that I wanna focus on today is specifically offbeat. Now, first off, before we go any further, I wanna take a moment to point out offbeat in general when you're working in Studio One Song, because when I first had a look at this workflow, I thought something was going wrong. But if we open up our metronome options, and I was to play from the top, and we'll make sure we activate our click, and let's go ahead and press play. Okay, so we're in a 4-4 time signature, 120 BPM. Watch as I start to slide the offbeat up. So those are the eighth notes that are happening in between the quarter notes. So that's what's defined as an offbeat. Now, obviously, if our time signature was different, that offbeat could differ as well. So that's the first thing I wanna point out. Let's go ahead, let's open up our MIDI over here. Now what I wanted to have a look at is whenever I'm working with hi-hats, for example, let's say that I wanted to do alternating closed hi-hats. So I've got the drum editor open over here. I'm just gonna hold down my command key, control on a Windows system, and let's go ahead and let's drag these out. So the first problem is that these are gonna sound really robotic. Let's take our click track off. So what I wanna do is essentially, let's just take our snapping off for a second. I wanna select, for example, every other note over here, and then I would pull them down so it sounds a little more like this. Okay, so, and then I would humanize from there, but essentially that's the step that we'll take to create. Okay, so enough talking, let's have a look at this macro. If I'm in the situation here where I'm doing, for example, something like eight notes that are alternating, I'm gonna go ahead, I've got my default velocity set to 127. Let's set this to, let's say 115. Now, if I activate my snapping and my grid quantize value is set to eight notes, as I drag across, I can create these notes. Now check this out, if I select this option over here, it selects all my offbeats. Now that allows me to very easily, for example, bring these all down. That's a lot more realistic. And then I could, for example, select the rest of them and then humanize these so I could get an even different feel. And I could do that as many times as I needed to really get these to sound you know, more human-like. So that in itself, I find is really cool. But one thing worth pointing out when you do this type of workflow is let's say, for example, that we were on 16th notes. Let's move to 16th note grid and I'll do the same thing. Now I've selected or I've created some 16th notes at my default velocity. Let's run the offbeat now. You'll notice that it is still selecting the same notes, right? And that might be what you're looking for we can adjust the velocity of those offbeats. But that I think it's important to point out that this is based upon your time signature and what Studio One would define as offbeats. And the easiest way to know that is to just listen to your click track and dial up this offbeat section. But if you had a different time signature in terms of 4-4, 6-8 or anything, that could potentially be different. Now, having said that, that doesn't mean that we can't create alternating hi-hats or anything that we want to alternate if we wanted to do it in a different way. So, for example, I could create these eighth notes over here and then run this macro that's going to select my offbeats. I could bring these down and then I could come to the actual instrument part, hold down Alt or Option, and I could essentially half this and that would be pretty much doing the same thing. Now we have our 16th notes. 
And if I wanted to make that, you know, double the length, I could just double that by duplicating it, select both of these, hit my G, glue them together, and I've still got really fast alternating hi-hats that are now 16th notes. And then I could go ahead and start programming anything else I wanted to. But let's go ahead, let's take a step back here for a moment because I wanted to point out one other thing. If, for example, we have, let me just actually mute this so we're not hearing anything. If I was to add some kick drums and maybe some other information like a rim shot or something like that. If you don't have any notes selected and you select this offbeat, this is going to select all of the notes that are falling on an offbeat. And if I adjusted these, I would be adjusting the velocity of all of those different notes. So you can see these rim shots and everything over here, they've all been adjusted together. So the way that I found to get around this is that if you first of all click in a blank space so that nothing is selected and then you go to the pitch that you want you hold down command or control and you select all of them and then you run the offbeat it will only select the notes on that particular pitch so we can still get that workflow that we want now having said that there's some other cool options here too like for example we can select all quarter notes and if i wanted to maybe just do that on for example just the hi-hats hold down command or control, run this, and that selected only the quarter notes, and then I could adjust the velocity of all these quarter notes. I could select only the eighth notes. I could select only the eighth note triplets. I could select every third note. And then of course, we have our main menu over here for select notes, which is just a basically a shortcut to be able to get to this option here. There's a lot of different options here. Some of them are really, really useful. I haven't really explored it in full, but my guess is that if you program macros, that you have access to all the different arguments. Actually, one way that we can check that out really quickly would just be by going into our macro organizer. Let's just create a new one. And uh, let's go to select notes. Yeah, so it looks like we do have some arguments here. We'll double click what we have. So we can select these. All right, yeah, so we're able to kind of customize these. So if you find yourself using this or you think it might be a useful feature, definitely worth taking a look into because I've only really scratched the surface with this basic macro over here, which allows us to, you know, for example, select all of our offbeats so we can do things like adjust our alternating notes. I would love to be able to create a macro that selects every other note or something along those lines, but Definitely have a look at these. If you're editing, working with a lot of MIDI, programming a lot of MIDI, there's tons of different options here. And what I'll probably do is, you know, do some more quick tip videos on some of these ones that I find really useful. But for anybody out there that's programming hats or needs to do like alternating rhythmic elements or something like that, working with eighth notes, really easy to be able to, you know, do this really, really quickly in one step. This is something that used to take me quite a long time. And again, so easy to do now by just adjusting that and tweaking that one parameter, running that macro through this button. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. I hope you guys got something from this video. If you are finding this useful, please go ahead, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them below. I'll do my best to get back to you. And as always, we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.